Hi guys, welcome to the Glycam how to video. We've got a lot of questions on our super slow mo chase sequence video, such as how do we balance the camera, how do we keep it all in focus? I'm going to answer all those questions right now. Firstly, this is the HD 1000 series. There's a 2000 version and there's a 4000 version. Now this is designed for digital SLRs with a weight of up to about three pounds, which I think is just over a kilogram. Um, firstly, it works by isolating the camera operator's body movement using a three axis gimbal. Now when you hold on to the cushion grip right here and uh, control with the two fingers and thumb, you can actually move your camera up, down, side to side. As you can see, it's fairly well balanced and it reduces all of the camera operator's unwanted shaky movements. Now there are other key parts to the Glycam rig and that is the cheese plate or the camera mounting plate. Now it has these really, really easily adjustable knobs. You just unscrew it. It's, it says it's quick release. It's more like just release. Um, but the idea is you can take your camera on and off the rig at any point. I guess it's called a cheese plate because it looks a little bit like cartoon cheese. Anyway, you screw your camera in the bottom there. You find a rough centre of gravity. So on this camera, it's somewhere between the lens and the body. It's actually more towards the lens because the lens is actually really heavy. Um, you screw in your camera, you add it onto the camera mounting plate. People have been known to get their own little tripod quick release plate that you can add to the camera mounting plate for your glide cams. So then you can take your camera off and on a tripod to back on here. But for now, this is all I've got. I have to screw it in with a coin or with a screwdriver, but it does the same job. So, on it goes. So the camera mounting plate comes with these easily adjustable knobs here. Now, I'm not going to show you how to screw the whole apparatus together because it's so simple, a five-year-old could do it. Screw, 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 done. Now onto the technical bit. Now, other than holding the camera, the sled's job here is to provide balance. It achieves this by increasing the camera system's moment of inertia. An object's moment of inertia is basically how resistant it is to rotation. The best way to describe the moment of inertia, if you just took us that ball, is if I compare it to a bowling ball or something similar, basically if you hold the bowling ball close to your body and rotate it around, it's fairly simple. The further out I extend the bowling ball, the harder it is to actually rotate. Therefore, a higher moment of inertia. In terms of the glide cam, the heavier the setup is, the higher the moment of inertia and the less rotation. This can be determined by two factors, the weight of the rig and the distance the weights are from the center of rotation, so how far the weights are away from the actual slab. The perfect compromise is found when the weight isn't too great that the camera operator has difficulty operating it, but also heavy enough to reduce unwanted camera shape. Now, before you even worry about balancing the glide cam, you need to think about what your actual camera setup is going to be. Now, I'm gonna discuss my actual camera setup, which is the Canon 550D, with the 18 to 200 mil 3.5 5.6 lens. Now, of course, it must have a certain amount of weight, which is why I use such a large, hefty lens. You can add an extra battery pack. You can tape on weights if you feel like you really need to, depending on what camera you actually have. In order to capture as much of the image as possible, I would use a wide angle lens. At the moment, my rig is set to 18 millimeters, and I'll keep it on that. If you use a telephoto lens, then the image will appear a lot shakier when you're trying to stabilize it. Avoid choosing too wide an aperture lens. I know people quest for the fastest lens possible, but in this case, it actually proves detrimental and makes the image all out of focus. Now, in fact, in, with this rig, I challenge anyone to be able to focus pull. Now, the way the pros do it is with a professional remote follow focus rig and remote monitor, which is done well away from the action. In our case, keep the aperture static, maybe above 2.8, and keep the angle really, really wide so you capture as much of the image as possible. If you are questing, for shallow focus with the subject in focus, then I would simply keep the subject distance exactly the same. So for instance, camera, actor, shallow focus. <laughs> to balance the glide cam, firstly, make sure the lens cap is of course off, make sure you've got a fresh battery and your cards are all in, because these are all factors which will knock the balance off. So I do a basic balance, and then you do what's called a drop test, which is simply where you start off horizontally and you drop the camera, okay? I usually go for about two or three seconds, so one, two, and that is your drop test. After that, you can go around and fine tune the actual balance of the camera. Now, if the drop is too fast, it probably means that the sled is too far, far away from the camera. If it's too slow, vice versa, okay? You can counteract this by simply adding or subtracting weights to your rig. Now, once you have a rough balance, you can go ahead and do the fine tuning. The way I do this is by resting it on a table or 
on your lap, whatever works for you, and you lift and drop. And whichever way the camera tilts, forward, backwards, left or right, you can do your micro adjustments with the adjustable knot there. This is where the forearm workout actually begins. As you can see now, my wrist is actually fairly well balanced. On analog cameras, they used to have to continuously change the balance of the rib because if you imagine film constantly running through the camera, it's gonna always change the balance. We don't have to do that anymore, so hooray for the digital revolution. When walking or running with the glide cam, I wanna share a bit of advice that an old film school lecturer actually gave me, and it is walk like you've prepped yourself. You're gonna use your knees as a bit of a suspension to take away even more of the unwanted movement, and you're gonna just essentially walk like you prepped yourself. I want to give some last minute tips. Don't forget to remove the lens cap. Always insert a fresh battery before you even commit into the balance. Now there is a thing called the pendulum effect, which is where as you're moving, the weights will often kick out in front of you and it creates this kind of pendulum. Right now our mind doesn't really have that, but I have seen it in the past. Basically what you need to do then is make it slightly camera heavier just to reduce that extra swing that you might get from moving forward or backwards. Well, I hope that helps. Come to the end of the how-to video. If you have any further questions, just ask me on Twitter, Facebook, or just comment below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Peace. The best bit of advice I can give to any wannabe Steadicam or Glidecam operator is practice makes perfect.